I now want to introduce a very special guest. For gun owners, there are few names that have become synonymous with protecting our rights. But last year, we added a new name to that list. We all know the case that bears his name, and we all owe him a debt of gratitude for having the courage to take on Washington, D.C.'s anti-gun establishment and win. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a true patriot, Dick Heller. Freedom, freedom, let's hear it. Freedom, wow, thank you, freedom. Well, hello, freedom lovers everywhere out there. And the people that aren't here, out in the biosphere and the, in the airways. I'm Dick Heller, and I'm here with my associate today, the president of the United States Bill of Rights Foundation, uh, whose name is Dane von Breiken Rickart, and he is the master strategist that actually saved this case for you and for me. Thank you, NRA, for inviting me here today. And I thank all of you folks for investing your lives, your fortunes, and your sacred honors for standing strong and preserving uh, and fighting for our rights. This weekend is not about me. I certainly appreciate the applause, though. It's about you. It's about a new beginning in our legal battles, our commitment to freedom, and what you can do to fight for our Second Amendment rights. Dane and I worked on the development of the D.C. gun case together for 15 years while also trying to convince others to join us in this desperately needed lawsuit uh, before the court changed its political complexion. Well, as you know, we won the case and now we traveled as a team. Thank you. And the Bill of Rights Foundation, my associate Dane, handles all the legal issues for me. Now, I'm from Washington, D.C., and it's like a tiny foreign country sometimes where it seems like the lawmakers make it up as they go along when it comes to the Constitution. They're weak on the First Amendment, the Tenth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and they certainly don't have any use for the Second Amendment. As an example, there's a D.C. council member who is a constitutional law professor at George Washington University, who stated in a public forum that the reason she voted for all the D.C. gun control laws was, are you ready for this? A constitutional law professor voted against the Constitution because she wanted the vote to be unanimous to show harmony on the D.C. Council. That's what our young, younger generation is getting. If that's not government by whim, I don't know what is. And that, my friend, tells you what little regard, contempt, actually, some politicians have for the rule of law, your rights, and especially the Second Amendment. Your Second Amendment right to defend your life is simply irrelevant to them. They have a political agenda. And understand, our elected officials are not the only ones we have to worry about. The unelected ones are even worse. They're called the United Nations. And when they pass, a gun control resolution that our president signs as a temporary agreement of understanding, and it's only temporary. You can bet your grandkids' freedom that what follows will be the loss of the Second Amendment and then our American sovereignty. Folks, this gunfight will never be over. It's really now just now beginning to turn another corner with new rulings from the court and a new beginning to all of us who understand what liberty really means. 
The Bill of Rights Foundation calls it the new beginning in the fight for the survival of our rights. There will always be the power hungry trying to disarm America. Dane, my associate and legal strategist, and I were about age 50 when we started this gunfight journey to the Supreme Court. Now, I'm pushing 70. So most of you are in here uh, are much younger than us, so you're starting decades ahead of us. Uh, you're working, you working within the NRA infrastructure can accomplish much more than two guys living in a basement apartment in Washington, D.C. because you cover the whole country. And keep in mind, all we had was one <laughs> security guard paycheck to pay all of our bills. You have a head start over us, and you can push this resistance to freedom back into remission. If every NRA member just helps a candidate run for office, we have the power to turn Congress around in the next election, just like 1994. <laughs> then we'll have freedom, freedom. However, we can all do more. If you're in here today and out there listening, we know you're freedom lovers, but we need to step up to the firing line and become freedom fighters for our rights. Yes, I can intend to continue my fight in the courts, work elections, and I hope uh, all of you will join us to make great things happen. Uh, please feel free to visit me uh, at the Charter Firearms booth uh, and tell me about your ideas, that's where I'll be, tell me about your ideas and your plans for number one, helping enroll at least one new NRA member. See how powerful that would be? Just one. And number two, your ideas for helping get a lower spending, tax cutting, Second Amendment advocate into office. Uh, I'll be spending most of my time in the 700 aisle in the charter booth. And after that, I'll be out there with you in the trenches with the National Rifle Association doing the exact same thing you all are doing because the Heller Foundation, the Bill of Rights Foundation, and the NRA are on the same team and the same one army fighting one common enemy. Keep in mind, they actually did eliminate the Second Amendment for 30 years in D.C. Our opponents, you could call them enemies, are well organized and they're strongly funded. So Dane and I have shown that the little guy can fight City Hall and win. <laughs> Just do it, because if you don't, City Hall wins. So, what do you want? Government by whim, or government by objective, reasoned law? Your choice. Thank you.